Here we've programmed a video game in Scratch, a little spaceship game, and you can see the spaceship moving around on screen here. And the cool thing about it is that we're actually moving the spaceship wirelessly with a wireless sensor called a pocket lab. And you can see um, when you tilt the sensor that the uh, spaceship moves around on the screen. So we're going to show you how we did this and how we integrated pocket lab and give you all the files so that you can do this as well. The first thing to show you is the Pocket Lab. Pocket Lab is a wireless sensor for science experiments and it communicates to the laptop here using Bluetooth. And inside are five sensors and Pocket Lab is capable of streaming 15 different types of data to the, the laptop. Here's the um, Pocket Lab app and you can see I have it turned on to the accelerometer and you can see the live accelerometer data streaming. There's three axes, and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. Over on the left, you can see where you can select the different sensors or functions. So it might be uh, magnetic fields or pressure uh, or temperature or any other function on the sensor. You click on that and select it, and then you get the data. So for example, um, I've selected barometric pressure here, and you can see the barometric pressure reading so for the program that we wrote, we decided to use the accelerometer. Here you can see that I can collect acceleration in three axes, X, Y, and Z, which, which um, correspond to the axes through the pocket lab. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let me move this aside here and you can see the pocket lab app. And then here is Scratch running in a Chrome browser. And I'm going to open up a file that has a very basic program that will show how this works. And you'll be, able to, uh, you'll be able to download all these and work directly from these. So here is Scratch, the Scratchy icon, and here is the control interface. If you click on More Blocks, this is where you find extensions. It could be a Lego extension or a Pico board or any extension. And here, these are the Pocket Lab extensions loaded. So I mentioned before there are 15 data values, and you can see them all. If I move this aside, you can see um, I've selected self acceleration. Here's the other data values that correspond to the extensions. And I wrote a little program to have Scratchy say the X acceleration value when I press go. So I'll press go, and there it is. He's saying the value that's streaming from the x axis of the accelerometer. And let's take a look at it. Um, just really simply, uh, red is x, blue is y, and green is z. So he's reading off to us the, the red value from this graph. So the next step, let's turn this into a game controller. In the approach we used, we decided to use the X and Y values of the accelerometer. And this program, which you can also download, it's called Scratchy Moves, will use those to, to make X and Y motion on the screen. I'm sure there's more clever ways to do this, but this is what we figured out. And it's the approach that we took. And I'm really curious to see what other people come up with for motion. Okay, so let's set the Pocket Lab down flat on a surface. And you can see there's very little acceleration. X and Y are going through the Pocket Lab in this direction, and they're parallel to the table. Z is pointing down through the table. So if I move the Pocket Lab, and uh, let's say, let's turn the X axis. Okay, so now the x-axis is facing down, and I get negative 1g gravity. And here it's facing up, I get positive 1g gravity. And I can do the same thing with the y-axis. Okay, so there's y, uh, negative 1g. And if I rotate it the other way, I'll get y, positive 1g. And it's 1g because sitting here on Earth, we have 1g of gravity. So we're going to take this and use this as um, a function to move, move Scratchy. So here's the general idea. Um, in the program, I have 
the x acceleration value and oops and and the y acceleration value and I multiply them by the range of motion to get him to move up and down because I know acceleration is going to go between negative one and positive one in x and y when I tilt the pocket lab. Now this background is really useful. Um, this is in Scratch already. You just go to Backdrops and you select it just like you select the Scratchy icon. And it's useful to tell you what up and down and what the range is. It's, it's really helpful. So if you put that in, that'll make things a lot easier. So here's the script. And you can see that I have put y times 180 and x times 240. And that corresponds with the range of motion on the screen. So he will glide in those directions as I tilt the pocket lab. And um, also, I, I put a little uh, think instead of say the acceleration value so we could see it working. Let's click on it. OK. So there, he's, he's saying the value. You see that? And then he's also moving as I move the pocket lab. So I tilt it, and he goes. And the sign on the 180 and 240 is going to affect whether it goes left or right. So you, you may have to play around to get that. But of course, I'll give you this program, and it, it should work for you in the same direction. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the data side by side, the pocket lab data side by side with this. Okay, here it is. And you can see I have X, Y, and Z acceleration. So remember X and Y are controlling him left and right. And you can see when I tilt it, the data goes down and up. And you can see there's a, um, a Z value here. Um, and we're going to use that later. And I'll show you how we integrate that into the program to shoot a projectile. So let's look at the game. Here's the game file, Space Blaster. Um, that will provide this file for you to download. And here's the game. If you use the Pocket Lab controller, uh, press, press Start. And you can see that we've replaced Scratchy with a little spaceship. And you can move him, move the spaceship by tilting the controller, just like you did with Scratchy. And you can see some other interesting features here. For example, we put in limits. So 1.1 is greater than the absolute value of the X and Y accelerometer values. And why did we do that? If you happen to shake Pocket Lab, you're going to get um, acceleration numbers greater than 1. And that's going to make the rocket shoot off the screen because we're multiplying it by the range of the screen. So this prevents that from happening and keeps it on the screen. Um, some other things we did was we made it a loop, and, and it, the loop repeats until it touches one of these meteoroids. And when it does, then you die, and, and you lose a point. So it's just you know basic Scratch game programming and, and fun stuff that you can do with it. And the last thing we did was to create a ball sprite that would shoot. And how did we do that? So um, we're using the z-axis data for this. And the, this sprite, if you look at the program, is hidden until you get a z-axis value less than 0. So how does that work? If you remember, we looked at the data before. Um, the the z-value is sitting pretty much at positive 1 because the z-axis is coming through the pocket lab, through the table, up and down. And if we flip the pocket lab over upside down, it'll go to negative 1. So it'll go less than 0. So when, it hap when that happens, um, it jumps out of this loop. It shows the sprite. And then the sprite moves up the screen like, like a projectile. And I have it change color and, and stuff like that and disappear when it touches the edge. So there you go. Um, we'll make all the files available so you can pick up where we left off and devise your own games and use Pocket Lab as a controller. And I'm sure users will come up with a lot of really interesting ways to integrate the data in Scratch. And we're really anxious to see what you end up doing with this. So have fun and, and enjoy.